Okay, now um, that was the first part of what we're going to share with you. And Bonnie is the artist there that was one of the artists. And we're just going to ask Bonnie to tell us something about this. Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for having me. I'm deeply, deeply honored. And thank you, especially to Anita, who has been stellar, absolutely amazing to work with. She is a wonderful artist, an amazing lady, and feel very privileged to get to know her and call her a friend. And I uh, look forward to a long association, and certainly with all of you. Um, basically, in a nutshell, I was approached by Una Kingdon from the Canadian Society of Painters and Watercolor, as well as uh, Rain Tunley. And they said, would you be willing to do a live demonstration on a stage to a Philharmonic? I said, are you nuts? Mm -hmm. I said, no. <laughs> she said, no, no, no. It's not that scary. All you have to do, you're going to pick the music and you can do whatever you want to it. Fine. So and Andrew and I got together. <laughs> we talked about it and we ended up doing, we picked this Rachmaninoff piece, which is called Isle of the Dead but it is a phenomenal piece of music. The conductor is uh, Jessica Kuhn, who is the, orchest uh, the orchestra and the conductor of the Richmond Hill Philharmonic. And uh, we did it, and I rehearsed all summer for this. Apparently, I'm doing it again in June. I will let Anita know when. I believe it's June 24th. I've been asked again for their bicentennial. And I said, okay, I don't know if I'm doing it solo or whatever, but we'll see. Anyway, um, you know what? It was a lot of fun. I had a good time. After I got over the stage fright and I realized all these people, most of my students came uh, to see this. I thought, God, what if I screw it up? Oh, my God. I've never done anything like this before. Now I know what real stage fright is. But you know what? I got through it. It was OK. It was good. And um, I really enjoyed it. The piece sold. That painting was sold. There was an auction afterwards. And it sold immediately, so I was very pleased for them. And, of course, I donated it. And um, that's it. It was just okay. an amazing thing. I paint to a lot of music, by the way. It was very enjoyable to see that. And for those who have not ever painted to music, I would challenge you to do it. I used to think, you know, mm, you don't have to do it. But I put on my earphones and I paint to music, and it's like it takes you to another realm. So does. Yeah. wonderful. And thank you for sharing that, Bonnie. So right sure. now I have a couple of questions for Bonnie. This is a little different Zoom platform than what we're used to original or most of the time. So um, and if you do have some questions, we have time for question and answers after. And you can put comments into the chat as well. I'll be monitoring that. OK, Bonnie, tell us where are you from and where do you live? If you don't mind sharing that. With us. Not at all. Uh, I was born in Toronto. Um... And I now presently live for the last 43 years in Thornhill, Ontario. I live in a condo, and uh, but it's a big condo. It has a very nice solarium. How's my audio? Is it good? It's good. good. Yeah. A uh, solarium that has fabulous light, which is one of the reasons I chose the condo. That plus this is one of the few that took a dog. At that point, I had a dog. And um, the uh, uh, that's pretty much where I do it. Um, I do my Zoom in my office area, which is part of my bedroom, which is humongous. So I have a little alcove where it's in front of a huge window. And this is where I do my Zoom classes and a lot of my discussions and everything else. That's what I'm doing. That's it. That sounds easy. and It sounds so easy. It's just in part of my, you know, my office, part of my bedroom. But we know it takes a lot of work to set these things up. You have no idea anyway. Oh, my God. Uh, I think my microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you do it. So, you know. But if you haven't done it, it's horrendous. It's really um, I had good. to buy a microphone, tripod to get the camera perched on, the whole thing. But anyway, what the heck? It's fabulous. I love It'd it. It's kind of interesting to have artists come along who are recording and maybe do a Zoom for those to show us your workspace. What are you doing? I think it'd be fascinating to have some people talk about it. That might be another panel discussion coming up. Bonnie, the next question is, have you been a full-time artist or a working artist your entire career? Yeah, pretty much. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I started painting <laughs> probably when I was nine years old um, at the uh, ROM on Saturday mornings. There was a children's group 
And then uh, in those days, you used to let a kid take a streetcar or a bus. It wasn't a big deal. And um, then I would go to later on to the Women's Art Institute, which is on Prince Arthur Avenue. And that's also adjacent to, um, well, it, it's very close to the ROM. It's in the annex area. And I started taking classes there. And from there into high school, I was in a special arts program. University, I've got um, an honors in fine arts. Uh, okay. I took other classes as well after that. Okay. And so at that point, I started probably teaching a little bit. And when my children were very small, not too much. It's very hard when you have three children under the age of five. But uh, I did after that. And so, yeah, I'd say pretty much the whole time. And I have been painting pretty much all my life. Okay. And based on that, when did you receive your elected membership in CSPWC? 1998. Very good. All right. Uh, what is your favorite painting subject? This. You can pan down and see. Uh, street scenes. Houses. Street scenes. Oh. Historical houses. One historical the... street scenes. People. Just slices of life. One of the people you see here on the side, sorry, I think that Bonnie's other camera is pointing down on one of her artworks. So if you see a painting, that is Bonnie's painting. Yeah, I think this, you have that on your camera. This kind of stuff. But I'll do anything. I like florals as well. Okay. Not as much. And I do do a lot of landscape. I love landscape. So I would say, in a way, this is a combination of landscape and architecture. Architecture is fascinating to me. Love it. And um, I do a lot of that. Just finished a workshop yesterday with the street scene in downtown Toronto. So a lot of that. But I will paint all over. I've painted everywhere. Okay. Our next, uh, we do have some other questions here. We're going to leave them. We're going to go for another video here that uh, Bonnie has asked us to share. So just bear with me now. And I'll go back into the screen share. All right. This is... Um, this is a part of the IWS that Bonnie is a part of it. We'll just see one of her paintings and I'll ask her just to give us a few words about it. So just, just enjoy the short little intro. I'm Ian Wright, president of IWS Canada. I would just like to take this opportunity to wish you a happy Christmas and a wonderful new year. In this happy time, we bring family and friends together and celebrate the season through watercolor. Thank you to all the members of IWS Canada, and thank you for all your artwork that you've shared throughout the year. Here is a gallery presenting all of that work. Okay, um, I immediately recognize this as Bonnie's work as I was going through this. So this is Bonnie's painting that's in the catalog. Do you want to tell us anything about this, Bonnie? Sure, that's the Thornhill Village Library. There is the oldest part of Thornhill. It's called the Thornhill Village. And it is actually on Colburn Street. That's where the yellow house was that you see as well. Colburn Street's one of the oldest streets in all of Ontario and Upper Canada. In fact, it's a loyalist area, and I love finding the history. This library, or part of it, the original part, is actually quite haunted, and there's been some very strange goings on there, if you believe in that. The librarians do. Anyway, they won't stay after dark, uh, but it's a friendly ghost. Uh, I love this library. They have now planted something called a healing garden, an ethereal garden. This is part of it and the walkway into it. I love capturing sunlight, especially starting this time of year. And so that's one of the things that I do. Color is a huge thing. And that's what I painted. Okay. 
Thank you. We just have some more people coming in. Oh, wonderful. Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you for that, Bonnie. We're going to move on to um, what this is. It's just a little snippet of it. And this is Bonnie teaching for an art society. We kind of talked about whether we wanted this in here or not. It's just very, very short, about a minute. And you'll be able to just, I mean, the video is much longer. We're just going to show up for about a minute. So you can see Bonnie in her element. But then I like to push color. This is the reference or one of them. And you can see that I have combined my own take on this. It is nothing like it. Um, and it becomes very much my own. Um, this is a recent one I've just taken. Okay. Do you want to tell us about that, Bonnie? Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, I do uh, a lot of demos and a lot of workshops. And that one was for the Oshawa Art Association. And it was basically uh, one of Toronto's iconic backstreet alleys. I love that. It's a whole world unto itself. have to be careful, though. There's some interesting people that uh, walk around there. So I never go alone. Uh, but very interesting. And so I thought that would be great. It's a very good subject. And it interests me and it interests a lot of people. They want to know why. I don't know why. It just does. And um, that's what I started to do. And I was teaching it and it was actually very successful. So there you go. And um, I think that is just beautiful. And so now we saw a little bit of how you teach. And I'm going to ask you now, how long have you been teaching? Uh, 40 years. 40 years. Okay. We're going to go into now something else that um, we're going to share again. And this is an upcoming trip that Bonnie has planned. And uh, we'll let her take us out on that. And another question that I have for you is, I know that you teach on Zoom and many people know that, but maybe not everyone knows how to find you. So maybe after the next little share, you can bring that into your discussion. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. All right. So is everyone okay with the screen sharing? You're seeing it, hearing it fine? Okay. Because you don't want to miss this next part. Actually, you don't want to miss any of it. So good. Okay. Now we're going into the Canadian Watercolor Spring Catalog. I think it's the uh, IWS, I think it is. Yes. Um, I'm not part of that. Yeah. But anyway, this is uh, an ad. Tell us about this page, Bonnie, and I will go on to the next page as well. Once you give me a break, I'll move on to the next page. Yes, of course. This is from um, the IWS Spring Edition. This is their quarterly magazine, and they had me as a featured artist as well for the spring. This is um, a trip that I'm going to be doing, my second one, hopefully, uh, to Newfoundland this coming summer. It's August 20th to the 27th. If you haven't been there, you have to see this. It's unbelievable. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. If you've ever been to the west coast of Ireland, Newfoundland is very much like that. I have not been to the south end of the island, the southwest part, which would be the, um, uh, I think, uh, I think the, the the big park, whatever it's called. Um, you know, it's a big province. It's huge. We usually stay in the St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, St. John's vicinity, uh, an area called Conception Bay. And there's several little villages and towns. There's so much to paint. You probably need about a year just to do that area. So that's where we're going to be. We have uh, guides that take us. Some areas know I take you. But I know St. John's pretty well. It's my second trip. The vicinity, uh, there are some small villages just outside of St. John's that are very easy to get to. And um, it's uh, fully escorted. We have a fabulous um, travel agent that coordinates all of this with me. I do the teaching. She does all the pricing and everything else and the travel arrangements. We stay in a nice hotel. It includes all breakfasts and it includes other stuff. If you want to find out, you I can let you know. Basically, the teaching is um, pretty much every day. 
but it's not all day. There will be lots of free time for you to explore for yourself. And in your free time, if you want, you can do your own thing. You know, a lot of my friend, my, a lot of my students say, well, you know what? After lunch, we're going off and, you know, Joe Blow and I are going to go do this painting. We want to do this harbor, whatever. Um, I do come around. I give a lot of hands-on information, a lot of hands-on help. And if you want it, and if not, you want to be left alone, that's cool. Because I get a range of artists, everywhere from beginners to master artists coming with me. And uh, this will be my second trip to Newfoundland. Not to be believed, really, really stellar place. And people to... are unreal. They're so friendly. Sorry, I'm switching this now to the next page and a symphony of color. And maybe you want to incorporate this in your speech as well. Sure. These are some of the paintings that I've done. Uh, on the left is the back alley. <clears throat> this was done by, uh, the whole thing was put together by Cynthia Car Cabrera, who is their web master. She has done this and um, helped me to write this. And we uh, decided to put up these pictures. It's a cross section of pretty much stuff I, you know, that I've already done. Like, for instance, the large picture there uh, where it says by Cynthia. Cabrera is one of Backstreet Alleys in Leslieville, which is an area of Toronto, an old area. Uh, let's see, the one at the top, you have to scroll down, I think, a little bit, is Victoria Harbor. And that is the boathouses. Uh, no, you just have to scroll. That's it. I think you're coming now. I have to find my scroller. Okay, it's right here. I can do. Can I do but it? If you can, if please do, because mine is not visible right now. I don't think it's allowing me to do it. Okay, here you go. There it is. I yeah, knew there it, it is. I knew it worked. Okay. There it is. So, okay, so that's the boat houses. It? Yeah, that's the boat houses in Victoria. Uh, we were in Victoria, BC painting. I did a workshop there. These are all one week, by the way. And uh, then next to that is bricks in a brick building called the Distillery. That's the Distillery District of Toronto. If you haven't been familiar with it, you're not in Ontario or in the Toronto area. That's where that is. And that's a fabulous place. It's the old Guterham and Warts where they made whiskey and uh, actually supported a lot of the U.S. economy especially during Prohibition. And one of their biggest customers was Al Capone. There's even a plaque that says so. And then down on the bottom of the yellow houses, that is uh, Niagara-on-the-Lake. And uh, I called it the day's end. It's a beautiful, 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 one of the prettiest towns in all of <clears throat> Canada. I'm sure you know it. That's it. Okay. So if it's inspirational, I will paint it. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions about this while I have the picture on the screen? I'll just go back to us. All right. So, Bonnie, I can easily see that architectural and homes and the gardens and things are where your paintings really shine. They're beautiful. So now when I was going through this magazine, just by looking at the pictures without looking at the artists, I could spot your work. That's always a good thing to be Thank so you. recognizable when I just basically only met you last year at our uh, renewal show. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I think you can understand from what Bonnie's been saying in her life's work, that all accounts for something. I've heard from some of my uh, present day students, they've studied with Bonnie on Zoom and everything is very complimentary. So that just a little uh, pat on the back for you on that. Thank you so much. Very yeah. kind. You're welcome. Any questions? We're going to open this now. Bonnie is starting a Zoom at 10 o'clock, so she's going to be leaving a little earlier. So we've done pretty good by going through all these screen shares and showing everything um, on YouTube that we could. Bonnie also did a video for the Canadian Society of Painters in Watercolor, and it's on the advertising brochure. It's the Yellow House. And there is a video, I believe it's still on the CSPWC um, YouTube. 
I don't know if they allow that to be purchased later or not, but you can watch that. But anyway, if you want to see them, Bonnie's floating in, in uh, the web somewhere with her videos. So contact her if you're interested in classes, et cetera. And Bonnie, you take it from here. And if you have any questions now, you please unmute yourself and ask Bonnie. She's here, she's very entertaining and she'll tell you. Okay, if someone was speaking up, we didn't hear you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Here it comes a correction. The uh, the demo on the CSPC website is not available for viewing now. Okay. So, but if she teaches a game for them, then please uh, keep it in mind. Oh yeah, I'll let I'll let Anita know. That's for sure. Okay. As soon as anything comes up, absolutely, a hundred percent. I do videos each week with Visual Arts Mississauga where I teach on Mondays on Zoom, but they do not allow me in my contract to share any of the videos. I can't. I'm sorry. Um, but I can always answer questions and whatever comes up that I can share, I will certainly put it on and send it to Anita and she can send it all to you, to the membership of this group. That I can promise. And um, that's the best I can do. I hope that's all right. <laughs> that would be on the Canadian Society of Painters, CSPWC members connecting with members. That's the one. Yeah. If you haven't joined that, uh, please do. It's it's a closed group. Whatever you write on there, it's not open to the public. That's what no. the closed means. You can find it, but other people cannot see what you're posting unless you're one of the members or unless right. you're in that group. So, uh, and it gets monitored. So, and I post things from here and different things for the society. So um, please join it if you haven't. We have someone else now in the chat and that is, hi, Bonnie. So hi. What, is, what is next for you? This is, sorry, I can't see it. Oh. I don't see the chat. Linda Kemp. Okay, I think this is from Linda Kemp. Hi, Bonnie. So what is next for you with your painting? Another medium subject? Uh, what is, uh, sorry, I didn't understand the question. Say that again. What is next with your painting? Another medium subject? What What are you doing next in your painting? Uh, right now I'm starting, well, I'm doing a whole series of street scenes again. And so uh, I'll probably be going into some mixed medium. With that, that's still watercolor based. And I will be doing pen and ink with that, actually adding pen and ink. Oh, there I see a chat down there as well. And I'll be doing pen and ink, uh, gouache. And one of my favorite things is to do gouache. There's actually a show on right now with the Toronto Watercolor Society. Uh, did I send you the invite, Anita? No, you did not. Oh, my God. All right. I can send that right after the class is over at 12 noon and she'll forward it to you. It's on now. It's in Newmarket, Ontario at the Serpa Gallery. I've been just so nuts. I haven't, I knew I was going to forget something. The show is on till the 6th. Okay. Okay. I'll be there this weekend. I'll be there on April 1st from 1 to 4 in the Serpa Gallery in uh, the CSPWC. And um, a version of what I'm about to say is there. This is an overlay. Very interesting kind of process where you take something called Bristol plate, if you've ever heard of it. And I put an overlay of gouache on it. Okay. And, uh, oh, yes. Michael, now I remember you. Yes, you were at DVSA. And anyway, I put the gouache on, let it dry, and then paint over that. It's very creamy texture. It's almost like a an oil painting. It gives a very interesting illusion. That's one of the things I'm really experimenting with. The other thing that I'm doing are starting to get larger again. Very difficult on Zoom to teach more than a quarter of a sheet. You can't really. And or smaller. Live, I'm doing that uh, with larger pieces. And I am also experimenting with complementary color paintings. 
with a little bit of discord. So all kinds of stuff because color is a huge thing with me. That That's sounds wonderful. Doing. And um, we also can only see your camera, your overhead camera. If you think you're being visible to us, it's not working right now. Oh, I'm right here. Um, on oh, your I took the camera away. Are they there you away? go. Now we Sorry see. Sorry about that. We I'm right there. You. We could hear okay. you. All right. So we did have a question too on who can see the chats. When this is recorded, the chats are not published with the recording. So then the, the chats are gone with that. Um, but we are recording. So whatever we're saying here, uh, that will be on the recording. Yes, please ask. I'll, I'll be yep. delighted please to ask. answer. Yes. Am okay, I supposed no to read them or are you supposed to read them to me? I don't know. Um, it doesn't matter. I think that's all the chats are covered now. I don't have any other messages on here. Um, I guess my question for you now is you're starting at 10 o'clock today with a Zoom. And because yes, ma'am. have been calling you. And what are, what is your subject for today? Uh, we're doing a rhododendron. Oh, mm. okay. Nice. Well, I don't usually do a lot of flowers, but. There was such a huge, oh, can you do a flower? Can you do a flower? I said, well, all right. You know, it's not really what I want. Okay. Anyway, so I put it into my lesson plan. Here, I'll just show you the beginning if you want to see it. Sure. It's just the very, very beginning. It's edited. There it is. Can you see it? Nope. You have to hold it. Uh, hold it up. Just even hold it up in front of your face. Well, what you, you can, can switch do your, you is can switch just go camera. to pin here. There it is. And this is portrait. So it's a little harder to see. But this is the beginning of just a bunch of colors that I'm starting to put in. And then I will start. See, it starts with a very concise drawing. And uh, then I go into it. Someone said, what about all your pencil lines? I said, who cares? <laughs> it's in there. You know, <clears throat> it's part of it. Composition is huge. And... Um, you can spotlight this. Just a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to spotlight it. I can't do it because okay. I'm not a host. Okay. So this is your other camera then. Let's wait till I find your other camera. Len uses asked, has watercolor always been my favorite medium? Any other medium featured in your work? Uh, yes, I do drawing, a lot of drawing. If you go onto my Facebook page, you will see my new ad for my May and June classes that I've just advertised. Uh, you call me for information. <laughs> Sorry. I use pen and ink uh, in drawing. I use graphite. Uh, we also draw with uh, Conte. And sometimes I combine all of that with one primary color in watercolor. Mm -hmm. And people love it. But the drawing is a very, very concise course. Uh, where atmospheric perspective is studied as well as linear perspective and how to compose. Composition is huge. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I teach. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I do one drawing class a week and basically seven watercolor classes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, Bonnie, so both of your cameras are now spotlighted so we have your flower drawing on our screen and you yeah and what else can i tell you um so i'm have, going I have, to be i have a question for you bonnie when you yes, go to toronto and you're painting these homes you're going into the alleys etc um do you need permission of the homeowner to set up and if you're painting on location or if you're just snapping the picture do you need permission to paint the home and advertise it yeah um no but you have to be on the street not on their property if you want to be on their property you have to get permission and very often people are very very flattered so uh the gentleman that owns this home i gave him already one version of this so a small one for himself to keep little house portrait kind of thing. Uh, not this one. This one is the new one that I just did. This was done for a Chicago group. This is what they asked for. When they went through my work, the program director uh, said, I like that yellow house. Would you do that for us? I said, really? I've got so many others. Okay. 
She said, have you done it a lot? I said, yeah, but that's fine. Anyway, no problem. You always sing something new anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Done this time of year. A little bit later, actually, because you have that, um, what do you call it? Cilia. I think it's called Cilia. Cilia. That ground cover, that purple ground cover on the uh, on the lawn. It's a perennial. And um, I have done this several times. It's probably one of my favorite streets. As I said, it's a loyal history. There's a tremendous amount of history here, really. Some of the homes do date back to the beginning of the 19th century. And there's even one that is 1776, the remnants of it. That's an interesting area. P.S. Thornhill was home to the group five of the group of seven. Just in case you didn't know. I did not know that. Isn't that interesting? It is. Uh, Bonnie, uh, when you do all these detailed paintings with the gardens and that, are you a purist in watercolor? And there's nothing wrong if you are or not. No, uh, not always. As I said, I use gouache and sometimes pen and ink. Okay. Now, this is a pure watercolor right here. This one is. But I have the others uh, that aren't, and I have the pen and ink in them. Uh, the one that I wanted to show you that's in the uh, Toronto Watercolor Society show is the one with the gouache, and that's the overlay of watercolor on gouached watercolor paper and the addition of gouache. It's a fabulous technique and something I like to teach now and then. And sometimes I use canvas. None of those are applicable to the Canadian Society of Painters and Watercolor. Maybe the gouache sometimes if it is a mixed medium show. But if it's a pure watercolor show and they're asking for transparent watercolor, no. You have to be very careful about what you're doing and where. <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing. That's pretty much it. I do use UPO. Uh, not a lot, but sometimes I do like it. Uh, what else? Um, that's pretty much it. But yes, I use mixed medium. So no, it's not always pure. Occasionally, and very seldom, I have used dry medium such as um, pastel to exemplify certain things if it's a slightly abstracted piece. It can go. It can be very interesting. And I do a lot of experimenting with different colors right now. And so could you explain that with different colors? Yes. Um, if there is a color combination I especially want to explore, I will go into different tones of the same colors. So different values, in other words. See what happens with the addition of white gouache. See what happens with the addition of neutral tint on their own. And then adding, say, a third or a fourth complementary color. Color is one thing that I have... Um, a lot of um, interest in. And so color is something that I studied uh, in a design course. And I thought it was going to be fun and it really wasn't. It was based on chemistry and physics. It was really kind of boring anyway, but I got through it and um, learned a lot about how we see color. Learned a lot about mood later on through an artistic endeavor. Uh, learned a lot about you know, study with as many artists as you can as well on your journey. I still do. I have a hell of a lot to learn. The more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. How important is color saturation in your paintings? And do you intuitively paint with color saturation or do you make it um, yeah. a mission in your painting? What do you mean a mission? That that I'm going to use a lot of color saturation in this painting, or do you just paint and it comes intuitively? No, no, uh, no. I mean, it depends on the subject. It would vary. Um, I mean, the piece that you saw that I did with the symphony, for instance, was uh, a whole thing. The whole thing was done wet and wet. So there wasn't a lot of color saturation. And of course it fades. We know that watercolor fades by 40% when it's wet and into wet. So I had to glaze it as much as I could, as long as the paper stayed wet. And that was the end of that. In a traditional watercolor, this is glazed. So you do your underpainting, your local color, the glazing of your shadow, and uh, then detail. So there are four stages. I do not paint just directly and leave it at that. I wish I could. I have studied with artists. By the time I'm set up, they're finished. I can't paint like that it's just not who I am <clears throat> and you know what 
I tell that to my students. Paint who you are. Paint what you are. If it's uncomfortable for you to do four stages, don't. Just start painting right in. I'll help you with it. But I do strongly suggest you have a very good drawing. That's imperative. I've seen your drawing on this house, Bonnie. And it, uh, I'm asking a lot of questions. But if you have questions, please, please just speak up, okay? Because she's only here for a little while. So this is now. We have Bonnie with all this this knowledge on the arts. So let's let's ask. Okay, I saw your drawing on this. And I thought the drawing had a lot of pencil work on there. Do you just paint over it or do you draw directly on your watercolor paper? Uh, both, both. Okay. But it becomes part of the process. You know, a long time ago, I saw the late Doris McCarthy's paintings and there was a lot of pencil on there. And oh, I yeah. thought, well, what the heck, who cares? If she can do it, so can I. I used to erase them all and I was very, very nervous about it. And then I realized it's just part of the process. It's fine. It's okay. Uh, was this painting done plein air? No, it was not. Um, I have done many paintings plein air. To do this, plein air would have been difficult. There's no sidewalk. It's just the road. I could do it across the street where there is a sidewalk, but then you don't get the view. So I took about 20, 25 photographs and um, maybe more. I do some sketches some value studies, make notes of color that I want to use. You know, most artists work that way, I think. It's pretty traditional. And then go back and combine things. For instance, there was Forsythia that had just come out. I wanted to put it in. There wasn't any in the actual picture. I went back and I will do it week by week as things start to come into bloom, into focus. And then uh, the final drawing is usually a conglomeration of all of that. I do not copy, ever. I interpret. But I do do a lot of stuff plein air. If you go into that CSPWC magazine, uh, sorry, the IWS magazine, with myself as a featured artist, uh, in there is one of my pieces that I did do plein air, which was... Um, on North Rustico Beach in Prince Edward Island. I was there last summer. So I've done that. And that was done right on the beach. Finished oh. in my studio, but started on as a plein air. Okay, and regarding the pencil marks, um, I agree with you, Bonnie. I used to just take every one out because as if it would be, you know, the so, so terrible to have pencil marks. But you know what they are? They're part of the artist's journey. Yeah, exactly. And I don't mind sharing that. There's nothing wrong with it as long as it doesn't overtake. Right. Um, you don't want to use a black pencil. I just use an HB. Um, and <clears throat> I never use a 2B to draw because it's too soft. HB is usually the right uh, the right strength. Okay. Yep. And, um, just one artist that I really admire. Just last week I was listening to him and he said, you know, when you're an artist – just be honest with yourself. That's all anybody asks, because that's going to come through in your paintings. And I think you that's betcha. Crazy. Absolutely. You were saying that, I, I thought, yes, OK, I realized that, too. And you can't just paint subjects for someone else. I mean, if you're doing a Zoom and they ask for something, yes, you do need to do that. But for yourself, unless it's something that you love, why torment yourself with something you have no interest in? No, be paint true to thine are. self. Yep, There's for sure. There's never a truer statement. And so if there's something I don't want to paint, I don't do it. Not for myself. I will only paint for myself what truly inspires me. That's what I put into my, into my, I mean, that's part of your soul. It's part of who you are. You have to, you know, um, you have to be true and be honest. If somebody said to me, why don't you do animals? I said, well, I love animals, but I don't want to paint them. <laughs> I said, and. What about people? I said, yes, I do figures. I don't do portraiture. Portraiture is a very difficult subject to teach. You have to have a very good knowledge of anatomy. I have it. Here's the thing. I'm also, I don't feel accomplished enough in that area. It's not something I've ever been truly interested in, in portraiture. So I don't do it. Figures, 
I love figures. I put them into a lot of my work in different different mm -hmm. venues. If you've ever seen um, Alvero's work, Alvero oh, Castanet, yeah. mm -hmm. and you can see his small little figures. They're just dropped in. Larger figures, yes. Um, I have done, I think there was one I did last year of a figure walking down in the snowstorm. Um, all sorts of things. So that is something I'm interested in, in enhancing a painting. But I will not do um, anything that I don't feel. I have a connection with someone said, do you do mountains? I said, well, I live in Ontario. There aren't any. So you also have to have a really good feel for what is around you if you want to do local. Because I do some traveling, I'm able to do stuff around me. But what I found was very interesting. People were very, very interested in local stuff that they could connect with. Um, you want to go to Rome and paint the Vatican? <coughs> you can buy a postcard. It's not something that you are familiar with in your day-to-day -day life. So maybe painting a street scene would be more interesting. You see what I mean? So it's that kind of thing that you can connect with. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And especially for artists who are just starting, you don't, do not need to paint everything in the world. Find out what your calling is. Yeah. Edit and learn to edit. I, just, I show them how to edit. Okay. All sorts of things that you can do. For example, you you um, how to get rid of the things that aren't necessary in your painting. Yeah, look, if there's a garbage can in a street scene, you don't have to put it in. Take it out. You know, um, I I like doing a lot of. As I got a new thing, um, I went to Buffalo before the pandemic, and did some factories there in Niagara Street, and these are the old factories that were old industries. <coughs> I'm oh, sorry, I, I'm getting allergies. The start of the 20th century, such as gold medal flower, CIL paints. Uh, Buffalo was a huge, huge area for um, Buffalo, New York. Fantastic architecture, by the way, uh, for the at the turn of the century for industry. A big, big port on Lake Erie. So um, I started taking these old buildings, which are now being turned into lofts course that's what they do and uh i got some of them before they were taken now i was there exactly two days before they closed the border to the u.s and canada through the pandemic i took those and i painted some of them and i went back just last week to get more and they're already renovated so i've lost the ambience in some of them i'm going to go back and see what else i can find but that kind of thing interests me. I like old, old areas, sometimes even dilapidated. Fantastic shapes. You know, all sorts of things out of there. Only an artist would understand that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, someone said, why are you painting that? I said, because I like it. Why? I don't know. Not everything can be analyzed. It just is as it is. That's right. It is what it is. Okay, any yeah. other questions for Bonnie before she has to go? It's about seven minutes to 10 and she starts a Zoom class at 10. So we'll give her a little bit of a break. We'll cut a little early. So any other questions or anything yeah. else you want to share with us, Bonnie? And then- Yeah, we'll I'm going to give you my, uh, my email. Just write it down if you want to ever contact me. It is watercolors at rogers.com. Very easy. W-A-T-E-R-C-O-L-O-U-R-S. Okay, at rogers.com. Don't forget the Canadian spelling, please. I've got a lot of problems with that. Uh, I don't know why, but I do. Anyway, um, I was told by someone in the U.S., by the way, that's wrong. I said, what's wrong? They said, you're spelling. I said, I don't think so. I said, I'm sorry to tell you, but Oxford came before Webster's. <laughs> anyway they haven't asked me back and i guess that's part of it but that's okay uh no problem there's nothing like being ethnocentric anyway but watercolors is spelled canadian i am canadian a eh? and i like butter tarts um <laughs> but i i you gotta have a good sense of humor about this stuff right get in touch with me there 
You can also get in touch with me uh, with um, Facebook. Request to be a friend. I'll be thrilled to have you. Okay, um, just under there. Uh, you can get me at any time. <clears throat> I'm very happy to give you my cell number if you ever really want to get me badly. It's 416-720-4247. If I'm teaching, I will not answer. I will get back to you and text you back. Be sure to leave your name and a message. Don't just give me a phone number because I won't answer to that. Too much spam going around. That's it. And okay. of course, you can get me on the website. I am a member of the Society of Canadian Artists, TWS. Just do a search. You'll see. I come up everywhere. And my website, I think you're going to put that in there, aren't you? The website for the SCA. Right now, I'm using their particular, um, uh, their, oh, I'm having a show at the end of April. I'm going to send it to Anita today. Okay. Along and she will send it out to you to the Heinzman House. I don't have their invitation yet. They haven't sent it out. I don't know why it's so late, but that's the way it is. This is the Heinzman House in Thornhill. It's very famous. The show runs from the, <clears throat> I believe, the 28th of April to 28th, 20th, the 30th of uh, April. Okay, so I'm going to send that to you. I think those are the dates. Don't worry, I'll send it out to you later, Anita with the dates to the Heinzman House show and also uh, the invite to the Toronto Watercolor Society. You'll get it late this afternoon. Is that all right? Sure. That sounds good. Okay. And I'll send you the links. So thank you, everybody. And thank you so much, Bonnie. And I think that we've been together for this last hour. Bonnie and I have been together quite a bit this last month on this. And I just find so much inspiration in just listening to her speak about art. Artists speak about art. That's who we are. Yeah. So thank you, Bonnie. Much appreciated. And thank you to everyone who came out in this. I want to thank everybody. How many people came? Oh, my God. That's wonderful. Good. Yeah. Well, well, I want to thank you yeah, all. You have too. been amazing. And please tell your friends. Um, you can contact me at any time. I'll be delighted to answer your questions or anything else that you have. Okay. Thank now, you. This will be posted on the members, uh, connecting with members, CSPWC, either today or tomorrow after I do a quick little edit on it so you can watch the replay with it. So again, thank you, Bonnie, and thank you for everyone coming out. And for those who are here, if you would like to be a featured artist, we have a free space for April and for May at this time. And um, so just contact me and any platform you want to do. This was a very different platform here. And if you've done it before, as artists, we always grow. You probably have a new story to tell us. So contact me and we'll put it together. So thank you very much and have a good day, everyone. And hi, Linda. Thank you very much. Linda was instrumental, too, in helping me. And uh, be well, everybody. Mm -hmm. Happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you, you too.